Now back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Gaston's White River Resort, and Barton Power Sports. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. As I slip into our first 30 minutes on today's show, uh, you've already missed uh, Captain Sonny Schindler of the Shore Thing Charters in Bay St. Louis, uh, Mississippi, where I spent three days uh, recently and uh, had a great time fishing. And then, of course, we just got through talking to Randy Furman. He's the CEO and co-founder of Extreme Hunting Solutions about the no trespassing signs. And now we're going to slip in. Uh, Frank Barton, of course, is here on the third Saturday of each month. And Frank and I spent some time together out at the hunting and fishing extravaganza. He brought the slingshot out there, the great slingshot, right? It was uh, pretty popular out there. It the was very a little, little different from... Uh, I had to explain to people that it was not an all-terrain vehicle. You did, but yeah. but you had the uh, the uh, half track, whatever that thing is, uh, that we went hunting in. The Dura Track Ranger. Dura Track Ranger. Yeah, you, you folks need to just drop over to Frank's toy shop over in West Memphis, right across from what Frank? Right across from Southland Park Gaming and Racing, otherwise known as the Dog Track. We have to do that on every show. That's part of our contract with Frank. We, t- we need to start getting some money from Troy Keeping out there at the track. Uh, yeah, yes, we need, we, need to, we need to do that. <laughs> you work that out and everything. So, uh, anyway, i got a young man with the studio with us that uh, really had a great time uh, uh, in the spring, had a chance to visit with uh, Robert Woods and uh, learn a little bit uh, about uh, him. He's uh, went to school. Where, Robert, here? I oh, went to Briarcrest. Went to Briarcrest uh, and... Uh, Family land for over a hundred years near Holly Springs. A wonderful, uh, a wonderful farm. Uh, you guys grow what? Uh, all we have was soybeans this year. Soybeans this year. Lots of soybeans. How was? How's it going on the farm practice? He he has Kubota tractors if you need a tractor too. Uh, well, good. good. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, how do think how things the farm things go? Everything's going good. Got a long way to go, but. Keep on getting the rains. Everything ought to be all right. All right. Let's talk, Robert, about uh, when we had a chance to ride around the property and things along that line. Uh, and you have some thoughts on leasing land and some good, bad, and ugly here, people that want to lease your land. So uh, just just tell us a little bit about your thoughts on uh, leasing hunting lands. How does it work uh, if someone needs some lands? And what are some things that uh, – you can take out of this positive, give some t- folks some tips out there, because I know you've got some strong thoughts on this. Uh, yes, sir. We uh, actually farm uh, our ground. Yes. And uh, one thing that it's a pet peeve of mine, and mm-hmm. I would guess every farmer, is the, the correct time to approach us. That's all, yeah. Uh, <laughs> July and about the first half of August is going to be your best time. We're kind of piddling right now. All right. We finished spraying, planting. I'm just waiting to get the combine in the field. So, you know, if you see a combine running in the field, it's best just not to bother. Don't bother you. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So look for a time, and this is really the – you're at the tail end of the time right now, but but, but yes. there's still time you can do this. Yes. And so do, do people just uh, – how do they uh, – because you've had some, some experiences. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> The biggest problem we have on our farm are deer. Uh-huh. Uh, we can't kill enough of them. Yeah. They're just, they're overpopulated. I would say I've lost about $100,000 to deer in the last five years. So wow. Whenever I've leased out land, you know, I've told them, you know, I need deer killed. Uh-huh. And uh, I'd be out riding around, checking on everything and, and ride up on them and say, well, how'd you do this evening? And they say, well, we saw nine deer, but... We didn't see any bucks, so we didn't shoot anything. And and what's going through my head is the whole reason that you're here is to get is rid- to help me yes. get rid of these deer. That's right. Yeah. But um, particularly does. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sir. Yes. Yeah. Sir. Uh, you know these these big bucks, they're gonna lay up in thickets. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, if they can get all the food, drink all the water, and breed all the does, why would he leave that thicket? Right. Right. So you got to eliminate one of the three. Uh, scenarios and the easiest one to do is the dose is the dose yeah you know, just kill some does the concept still is out there it's hard to believe you know i you know i kill three to five deer every year 
I, I very seldom kill a buck. I did kill one last year, but uh, very seldom do I kill a buck because I keep my freezer uh, full of, of, of deer w- w- with venison. So uh, on, on a property like you've got, I guess there are certain sections uh, that, that – um, so what's what's the going right now? I mean – yeah, it's between ten and fifteen dollars an acre. An acre, okay. Yes. So how much, how much will you lease? What is a typical lease for a a, a farmer? You think? Uh, right around two hundred acres. Two hundred acres. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll, we'll keep some for ourselves, to yes. hunt, and for our workers. All right. Do, do 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 you have a problem with poaching? Oh yes. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Now you're in Marshall County, right? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. and uh, I know the game warden in Marshall County, and, yes, they, and, and they have their hands full. Absolutely. there's. Uh, I believe Marshall County is the fourth largest county in the state of Mississippi. It is. And we have two game wardens. You have two game wardens, and also with that much land, uh, uh, you run across deer that have been killed. You don't, you know, I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, you go out to a place going home in the evening, you yeah. come back out the next morning, and there's a deer laying in the field with its head cut off. With the head cut off. Yes. Yeah. You know, if you're going to, me personally, if somebody's going to I want to know what you think. You're, you've you you've got some good, some suggestions on this, because you're frustrated by this, I know, when we talked. Yes, sir. Uh, if you're going to shoot a deer, yeah. at least take it. Make yes. me think that you need the meat to survive. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, don't just go out there and shoot the deer, cut its head off and roll out yeah you know. and you can report all these you can but the game with even with two game wardens we rarely catch them um but you're looking for them we're, we're looking for them and i always have a, an ar-15 with me because being that they are poachers they are armed yes so yeah. you know Ooh, it, could, okay. it could take an hour and a half for the police to get to us yeah if something were to happen uh-huh so i refuse to be a victim you don't want to be a victim don't want to be a victim now, Frank, I know that uh, uh, I don't know how that relates to waterfowl hunting and things along that line, but uh, you do have, I'm assuming you have people that aren't supposed to be there, or whatever it might be, because you, yeah, got, you ha- have family land, I know. and Yeah, it's it's happened more than once. I've gone out there uh, to, uh, especially if it's a spot that I haven't been to in a while, but uh-huh. I know that I'm going to go there, you know, I, I choose to go there for whatever reason, mm-hmm. and uh, I've had uh, I've had folks out there that uh, either actually beat me there that morning, or <laughs> or or showed up after I was already there, and and uh, you just you try and be as firm and polite, and just say you don't you know you need to be go go someplace else. This yeah. is you know. And I've never had a, I have not had a problem with someone being belligerent. You have. Or, uh, it, cause it, it can be a scary situation. That's what, uh, as Robert was saying. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What he was saying. Cause you know, it's, it's dark. Uh, you know, people are, are, are armed. Yeah. Uh, when it goes, when it happens that way. But yeah. I, I haven't had, uh, I've never had a situation where I felt uncomfortable, but I also have a pretty direct demeanor. Yes. When it, you know, when it comes to that and if you know you're right and the other person's pretty certain that they're wrong, it kind of makes the uh, the scales a little more balanced, uh, a little unbalanced in your favor. <laughs> in your favor. Say. And that's what, you know, because I, I know I was, I, as, as I told you, I hunted on Robert's land and uh, we were uh, doing some still hunting for turkeys and uh, a truck pulled in and down off the road back there. And yeah. I was kind of concerned about this. Who, who, who was this? You know, we've had these things happen. And I've been at places like this where you don't know it might have been a worker or anything like that, but you you, you know you there's no way to uh, tell who's out there, you know, particularly if you're at the dawn or right at dusk, yes, or, or during uh, the night time or things like that. So I think these signs, and I I know you've got uh, signs up or posted signs or things along that line, and and do you have cameras? Uh, we don't put out cameras. Um, they tend to sprout legs and run away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you got cameras, but I you, do. I just put them where they're sort of hard to get to. Hard to get to. Well, they, I guarantee he's got some places that are hard to get to yeah. that uh, to get back in there. And these cam, but cameras are uh, are a detriment though. But I think the signs, you know, you don't know. I mean, uh, the, the, some of these guys, I don't. Some of these people, I don't think can read. 
but uh, maybe they can see the camera on there and uh, and think that you know that there are cameras around. So uh, so we're talking to Robert Woods uh, uh, about uh, a little bit about the detriment. Uh, there are people out there that just don't go by the rules. Yeah. And yes. And and you know that this farm's been in your family, your your, your dad, your grandfather. Uh, this is not something new. There are people who are, are who were born to be poachers, yes. and, and that's the way it is. Yes, sir. And yes, so, sir. And, and Mississippi has no check-in system. No, no, sir. So um, I, I never understood that. I mean, I know they got it's. It takes, you know, Arkansas's got check-ins. We can do it on our tel- on our phones. Now. Yeah, we can do it on our phones in 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 Tennessee, but Mississippi, you, uh, we're just a little backwards. No, 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 no. I didn't all. say that. Now, don't say that, Robert. <laughs> no, no. But uh, with that much land, you do have a a, a little bit of a challenge uh, for somebody that only has a hundred acres or something along that line. But but it could it could happen whether it's a hundred acres or or three thousand acres yes, sir. like yes, that. Sir. Yeah, uh, and we let people around us hunt on our place yeah you know that bordered uh-huh because they'll help keep an eye on it also they will won't yes, you yes sir, yes, sir. It, you know if you have a good working relationship with your neighbors everybody benefits yeah um and one of the one of the biggest peeves i have as a farmer is when i would let people come out and hunt and they would drive right through the middle of the field cutting <laughs> ruts uh, you know if you're going to have a lease, stay along the edge of the field. What do they need, Frank? Well, I was just like he. I was ready for him to say and cut up my turn row. <laughs> yes, know, sir. Soft ground. It's rained, and you got a pristine turn row that doesn't have any ruts in it. And the next thing you do, you see somebody that's got a four wheel drive truck because they got a four wheel drive truck, and they're just going to take it down the middle of the road. Yep. And yes, that sir. rut is there for the rest of the season. Yep. It's permanent. It, I it mean, is yes, sir. there. It does permanent damage, and, and and they don't realize that. They think that they can just go wherever they want to go. And it costs Robert money to fix that rut because he has to take a piece of equipment down there to fill the rut in, and they don't think about that. No, sir. No, sir. Well, I know that uh, we got Robert Woods in, in with us this morning. We're going to talk some more with Robert uh I think this is a subject that I've been wanting to do for a long time and uh, talk to Robert about it. And uh, he, uh, uh, it, it's, uh, it just blows my mind that uh, people do what they do. And just, uh, of course, I've been on details with the TWRA here when Timex was out there. And it was a fake deer. And uh, people would come up and shoot that fake deer. You know, in fact, they got one man twice. He, they <laughs> sh- he shot the deer in the morning and came back and shot him in the afternoon after they'd already given him a ticket. You know, that deer was. I, I can't, he got bonus points for that. He didn't got he? bonus points. I can tell you that for a fact. All right. Uh, I, don't, I don't like to right. spin on court for that one. Yeah. All right. We're going to take a break. Got Robert Woods in studio. Of course, Frank Barton, third Saturday of the month on this August the 15th on Outdoors with Larry Ray. One week, as Greg Ratliff says, before the squirrel season opens. That's hard to believe. We'll be right back on ESPN 790. You can find. 